So I'm going to um, speak a little bit about Arosha um, and the work that they do as an organisation um, and mostly focusing on the Eco Church, which is their, um, one of their big projects in the UK. Um, Arosha uh, began life as in, in Portugal, actually, um, with a field study centre that they started. Uh, and Arosha actually means the rock in Portuguese. They have... Uh, five main um, commitments. First of all, they're Christian, um, and a biblical faith underlies everything that they do, um, loving and caring for human society and the world in which we all live. For conservation, and specifically to carry out research and restoration of the natural world and the environment. And then community through a commitment to God, to each other, and to wider creation. The cross-cultural, so they uh, aim to work across different cultures and learn from different cultures and best practice. And cooperation, working in partnership with all sorts of different organisations. There are probably three main projects that uh, Arosha in the UK uh, work on. One of them is a thing called Wild Christian, uh, which encourages uh, individuals and families to get involved, to uh, get involved and to go out and to do things that are practical. Um, it's been a really useful and important thing through the COVID-19 crisis because as we've been locked down, they've been sending out ideas and newsletters each month to uh, people who've signed up different things you can do around your local area in your garden. Um, some of that stuff that Sam was talking about, about being really observant in the world around us. Another thing that they do is a thing called Partners in Action. Um, and that, in fact, is a photograph from Hillfield Friary of when I was there and Sam was the guardian still. Um, and Hillfield is one of, of um, Arosha's partners in the UK looking um, very much at conservation in the extraordinary landscape that they have there and getting other people involved and education that comes out of that and observing nature and creation around that particularly wonderful place. Um, there are actually uh, 10 projects that they're involved with as partners in the UK, which include Abernathy Barnstable in Dumfriesshire, Ashburnham Place, Adventure Plus in Oxfordshire, Brunan Manor in Devon, um, churches go wild in Oxfordshire and, um, and Hillfield Friary and here in Wales they have one whose name I can't actually currently see but there's one near Swansea that they're um, involved with too. So that's part of it, Ac active conservation work in different areas working in partnership with existing organisations. The main thing we want to, I want to we focus on today is Eco Church, because that's one that primarily probably affects us as a group and is something that we can be involved with as churches, a framework for action. Um, on the face of it, Eco Church is simply a questionnaire that you fill in online. Um, and in that sense, it's perhaps not seemingly very exciting, but if it's best not to view it in those terms, what it really is, is an, um, a structured action plan that by working your way through it and going back to it enables you to see how you're doing to measure your your activity as a church against a set of criteria and you can then begin to get an idea of how ecologically you are acting as a church um, and it covers quite a lot of different areas and Currently, there are 2,800 different churches over the UK that have signed up to this. Um, that's an impossible map to look at. Uh, but in Wales and here in the St. David's Diocese, currently there are um, 10 churches, I think, who have signed up and four of whom have managed to get the gold, the, the, not the gold, the bronze certificate so far, um, which includes... Gainers churches in Llan Pimside and um, Llan Llaudog, 
Marcus's church, I think, um, <laughs> and uh, also Holy Trinity in Aberiron have um, have managed to get to their bronze award. Uh, but the thing is, it's really easy to engage with this. It doesn't need you to do anything very complicated. All it requires is that you go to the website and sign up. Um, and when you go to the website, it'll look like that. And then you can uh, just click the register button and sign on. And from there, you can log in. And um, what happens is you'll get presented with a series of different areas in which they are looking for some progress. And there are some questions that they will ask you about each of those different areas. And you work your way through all those different areas and you can then begin to um, collect to see how well you're doing. And if, depending on your answers, you get a certain number, ticks in certain number of boxes, then you will receive the bronze award and then get a few more things and then it's the silver and then the gold is actually quite difficult to get um, and is designed as such. Uh, and the questions are really pretty straightforward. Um, he says, looking for his sheet. So there are things like, uh, so under worship and teaching, do you use hymns and songs in which we which celebrate God's creation? And things then like at least quarterly, less often, never, need to find out, not applicable. Um, the church prays for, our church prays for environmental issues. Our church hosts guest speakers from Arosha or other environmental organisations. Some of them, the areas can be a little bit more difficult, so particularly the changes to buildings and heating and lighting. Um, but you can just work through those questions and you don't have to be able to get ticks in all the boxes in order to be able to get the bronze award. In fact, it's actually quite easy to do that. So it's a really straightforward and simple thing to work your way through. It's free. You can just sign up and see how you do to start with and then um, and then let it encourage you to try and do better in different areas. And Arosha have provided on the website as well loads of different resources under each of the different headings. So you can just go and look at what they have and they'll give you different ideas about how you can improve what your church is doing in each of those different criteria. So it's a really easy thing to engage with and I would just encourage almost everybody to register. There's really no reason not to register your church um, and then just begin to work through some of the things and I think you'll be surprised at just how easy it is to be able to get the bronze award. Um, we can ask Marcus and Gaynor, um, well Gaynor is going to share with us in a minute about how they went through and some of the things that they did in order to get that award um, but it's, it's, it's really nothing to be too worried about. Um, Arosha will help as well, um, as well as the resources. They have some, uh, they're just appointing some officers who can um, help you too to work through some of these things. Um, people have come up with all sorts of different ideas through this in order to be able to um, improve their environmental footprint. I love this one, which is a church somewhere which has got a huge, big, um, old church. Which, and, and a small congregation. So they've simply put up a marquee in the middle of the church um, in which they now hold their services and therefore only have to heat the marquee and not the entire building, which seems to me to be just a fantastic um, out of the box kind of thinking. Um, and of course, there could be more sophisticated ways of uh, thinking about that. Um, or simply as we were hearing early from the um, God's acre that um, just being able to encourage wildflowers to grow around your church hall or on any land that you've got and thinking about how you use that land can be just really simple things that are very accessible that you can do to improve the environment and the conservation within your area. And that's really all I want to say about Eco Church. There'll be hopefully an opportunity when Gain is finished going through what they've been doing uh, in order to um, ask some questions. Um, but I would just encourage you, it's, it's a really, really simple thing to get involved with, costs nothing, and is a really useful resource to just check yourselves. How are you doing environmentally within your church, within your parish, and actually within our diocese as well? 
So I'll now pass over to Gaynor to talk about what they actually did. Well, thank you, Matt. So hopefully what I'm going to do is to show you um, some of the stuff that we did in Clan Pimpsite and Clan Clowbog churches, if Matt can get my slides up. Hopefully, brilliant. Um, it's, as Matt said, eco churches, to get a bronze award is actually fairly easy. It's not difficult um, to tick the box. The difficult thing is changing hearts and minds, and really that's what we're we're trying to do so as brother Sam said it's quite easy to be very active but to get detached so with doing eco church you need to do the actions but I would also say it's really really important to try and embed the theology because if you're not embedding that green ecological theology with it what you'll find is the actions won't actually last very long um, just to say as well, for us, um, we couldn't have achieved eco-church status without partnership working. So um, partnership working across our LMA, across the diocese and with other community groups that, that aren't churches has been really key to helping us achieve that as well. So here are the two church buildings. Of course, they're not the churches, but they are the church buildings that now um, have eco-church status with us. So the one on the left of the screen is Clan Pimpsite Church. They're both small rural churches just outside Carmarthen um, with small congregations with not much money um, and not much resources, but still we've we've managed to achieve this eco-church status. So Clampempsite Church is right in the middle of the village that I actually live in. It's right opposite the village school. And Clanclaughog Church, which is the other one, you can see is a very pretty, lovely rural church, right on the edge of the Breckford Forest, but it doesn't have any community really around it at all. It's, it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, okay, next slide. Thanks, Matt. That's just our um, certificates, just to prove that we have got them. That's what the certificate looks like when you get it. Okay, next one. Okay, so as Matt said, eco church is split into categories, and what you'll find is that actually they they overlap. But here's just some of the things that we've been doing. So in the worship and teaching category, the left hand side. Um, this Lent, actually our Lent Bible study was on Ruth Valerio's book, Saying Yes to Life. If you haven't um, had a chance to have a look at that book, I'd recommend it. It's also got brilliant online resources with it. Because we've got small congregations, our Bible studies include children and adults together. And that book worked really well for that. It's got really good youth resources as well. And because it was during Lent, the, the second half of our Bible study um, carried on through lockdown. So we, we started it meeting together and we ended it via WhatsApp, but we managed to keep it going. So even in lockdown right now, there's plenty you can be doing eco-church wise because uh, we're all worshipping, hopefully still, and we're all teaching. The second picture is um, one of our rogation walks. And I, I put that picture up just to show you that um, eco church needs to happen, whatever the weather, because it's about getting outside. So we, much of it. So we still get outside, even in the rain. Um, I was quite pleased to see that prayer about rain from the Book of Common Prayer. Um, but just to show you that, that we carry it on, whatever. Um, our rogation walk this year was virtually, so if you go to our Facebook page, you'll see our virtual rogation walk. But it's lots of it is about embracing that whole um, worship that Brother Sam talked about, about the gift, the family and the song outside of our church buildings and not being constrained by them. OK, next slide, please. Um, this is, um, we had an eco open church event. It was a ministry area event, but I'm just trying to show you in this picture that you, you can't and you don't have to do it all yourself as the clergy person in charge. You need to embrace those partnerships. So here's, here's Rhiannon. 
um, doing godly play about the creation story in Genesis with some of our young people. And this is about embedding the theology, like I said earlier. So in a minute, you'll see some of our young people outside um, playing and doing activities there. And actually, there's no reason why we couldn't have done the godly play outside, but it's about getting the theology along with the action as well. Okay, next one, please. Um, buildings for us was perhaps the most difficult category because our buildings um, are not very user friendly in many ways. The, these pictures are of Clampentside Church. Clampentside Church doesn't have running water, it doesn't have a kitchen, um, and our toilet is in a shed, which you'll probably see in a bit as well, I think. But still, we manage to do this. So some of the building things that you can do are quite simple. One of them is about um, not using disposable cups and plates and cutlery. So we've got rid of all of that, which is why you can see Marlene and Betty having their lovely cup of tea there in a proper cup. And then um, this is the same event, actually, you're seeing the children in the same event where we were talking about the Last Supper, um, again, with their, their reusable cups there. And just to put that up to show you that when we do, um, kid, they're not kids activities, they're all all age activities. But when we do those all age activities, we try not to use um, loads of craft materials and materials that will end up in the bin because actually what we find is the kids love doing stuff like this reenactment of the Last Supper, which actually doesn't use loads of, um, loads of resources in that way. Okay, next one, please. Okay, so this is a little bit more about our buildings. That, that shed on the left is our toilets in Clampimpsite Church, but I put that there because um, we've got our very simple rainwater collection there and we're using that rainwater now to water the veg which is also planted in our graveyard and if you can see that strip um, along the edge of the building there unmown so we're leaving some areas unmown we've planted wild wild flowers in that area the first poppy flower this week so we're really um, pleased with that and then the other picture where we managed to um, score lots of points on our building. So we, we were quite lucky in this way. Um, that's the vicarage that I live in. Um, so well done, the diocese, because it's a brand new purpose built vicarage and it is um, very environmentally friendly. So you can see the solar panels on the roof there. So your vicarages count in your scores for eco church with buildings as well. So if you don't have um, a very adaptable church building you might find that your vicarage is is better or more adaptable and you can get the get the points in that way okay next one please okay so land is another category so this is um just showing you how we worship and we um embrace everything that's around us we look for that gift like um brother sam said and we use it right right in the graveyard right in the middle of all of that which is quite controversial for some of our congregations some of our congregations don't think that children should be playing in graveyards and we still kind of surf that wave but um, this is Stations of the Cross. This was Good Friday, not, not this year. We did it, still did it outside virtually this year. Um, but Stations of the Cross there on Good Friday. And that, the other picture on the right is one of our ordinands in the LMA. That, that's Christy, um, helping our young people just, just see nature and meditate a little bit on nature as well. Okay, next one, please. Um, this is okay so one of the things is about composting this is our the picture on the left is our compost bin in um, Clampimp site church are provided free by Carmarthenshire County Council all I did was ring them up and they delivered it so thank you Carmarthenshire County Council for that because that's working in partnership again I put the other picture there just to show you that you can do all this stuff but unless you change the hearts and minds, and like I said, embed the theology, it's not going to work because still we have people that want to chuck compost and plastic all in the bin together. And then I have the delight of sorting it out. So it's not as easy as just sticking a compost bin there. You've got to actually persuade people to, to use it and show them how to use it properly as well. Okay, next one. 
Um, this is about land as well. So the picture on the left is Clan Clowhog Church. This is an area of land actually opposite the church building that we own. It had loads of trees in it that had ash dieback. So we've been um, involved in a project there of new tree planting. But like I said, we're not rich churches. We have no money, really. So um, those trees in Kankalbog donated through a grant by the county council again. And then the other trees on the um, right of your screen, free trees. Um, I can't remember who they came from. I think they were Forest Trust, maybe. Um, but free trees, which you can get easily, those are the ones which are now planted in Camp Saint Graveyard. Just a quick word about planting trees. You don't need faculty. You do need permission of your archdeacon. And obviously you need to be a little bit careful about where and how you plant them as well. Okay, next one. Okay, so this is just showing you as well the use of the churchyards. This is both um, Clan Pimp site. So the picture on the left is um, the adult in that picture is Rosie. Rosie isn't um, a regular churchgoer, but she is very active in the allotment association in Clan Pimp site. So we've managed to engage them. We work very closely with them and they help us out. So that's Rosie pl um, planting, I think, some of the wildflower seeds there and those two children are children that are involved in the Plant Dewey Family Centres in Carmarthen um, who came to one of our events so again partnership working with Plant Dewey has been really important for us. They um, all came on the bus from Carmarthen for free because we managed to liaise with the bus company. The children under five are free anyway but their adults came free as well because we managed to liaise with the bus company and the county council about that. So all of those kind of things can be done. And then um, just some more of young people there playing and enjoying um, right in the graveyard there. Okay, next one. Uh, again, this is, this is our um, eco open eco church event as well. So um, making some little bird feeders there. And then the other picture I just put you because there for you, because one of the things that we've done is stop using glycophosphate weed killers in our churchyards. Um, and that has created um, an abundance, really, of like, um, like Brother Sam said, what some people might think are little weeds um, growing up there, I think is a beautiful part of God's creation. So getting people to, to see that is... Um, is not always so easy. You need to, you know, getting people to see it not as weeds, but as something that is, is part of creation and is beautiful, takes that kind of shift of mind. Okay, next one. Okay, this is our Bug Hotel in Camp Saint Churchill. That's now full, so that's creating um, a lovely habitat for the wildlife there and helping people to look for that gift. Um, had lots of you know kids picking up ants and snails and worms and just little what we might think are little things but just looking and finding that that wonder of creation so that's Lisa helping to create the bug hotel which is now full and abundant oh there's a proper cup on top of it there as well look so they've had their their cup of tea in their proper cup down there um but yeah um that that's just made out of pallets made by somebody in our congregation not me and it cost nothing Next one. So community and global engagement is a really, um, is one of the categories in Eco Church as well. And that's something we've worked quite hard on. So um, the picture on the left is our Lenten meal. This was a, another LMA event across the LMA. That's in the Warren restaurant in Carmarthen, which um, specializes in local organic and vegetarian food. So it was just an introduction a first introduction to some people of vegetarian food and just beginning to think about, like Brother Sam said, beginning to think about the food we eat, where it comes from, how it's produced. And it was giving people an introduction into that, working with our, with our friends at the Warren who helped us to do that. The picture on the right, that's actually St Peter's Church, not one of my churches, St Peter's Church, Carmarthen, also in our LMA 
and just showing you again how we're involving the local community. I also happen to be chaplain to the Air Cadets. So this is one of our Air Cadets who's just been out on a litter pick um, around St Peter's Church. But that, that um, engagement and involvement um, is brilliant for Eco Church, but also gives you huge mission opportunities. So that comes along with it as well. So it's, it's well worth doing for both those reasons. Okay, next one. Um, this is, um, we've been embracing Forest Church quite widely as well. Um, if you don't know about Forest Church, I don't know if you can all see this at the moment, but here's Forest Church book. I can show it again afterwards. And it's, it's Forest Church is really all about those things that Brother Sam was talking about, about looking at that gift, um, that gift of God in all of creation and all of nature. So um, this, our first Forest Church event happened just before lockdown. But as soon as we're able to meet two, more than two families outside, Forest Church will uh, start again. Uh, the family on the left is a family that's very embedded in our, in our churches and comes to worship in the church often. The family on the right um, don't come to worship in the church building often but they will come to um, Forest Church and engage in in that kind of worship so yeah so that's great okay next one um, this the, the final category is lifestyle so I put these um, pictures up here just to show you a little bit about um, recycling and embedding what you do with eco church through the rest of what you do as well to make it a more kind of wholesome and holistic thing so the picture on the left is um after our holocaust memorial service our annual holocaust memorial service which is interfaith um and i put that there because we'd made a big um paper chain of, of commitments but all the paper that you'll see in there on that paper chain is recycled so it's just a simple, those simple little things, making sure you carry it through. And then the picture on the right is um, Morgan in one of our open church events. We've been doing about um, Joseph, Old Testament, Joseph with the dream coat. So there's Morgan with his, with his dream catcher. Um, again, trying to use natural materials and trying to help um, parents and families look at that as well so you know trying to say you don't need to use kind of loads of paper and plastic stuff and and all of that your kids are happy playing with a bit of willow and feathers and things that you can find easily anyway and just think about how we use the earth's resources a bit better and then I think is the next one the final one Oh no, this is, um, this is our monthly market in Clanclaughog. So Clanclaughog um, Church does have a church hall. So again, we're doing things to help people think about more local food, think about where food comes from and purchasing more locally. So in uh, pre-lockdown times, we have a monthly market up there, which does all those things and is a huge missional um, opportunity as well, but also helps us to raise a little bit of of money so that's our monthly market up there which i have um very little to do with actually that's that's pretty much all run by lay people um again talking about community involvement and embedding the lifestyle this was a fair trade event at um the school Peniel, which is one of the schools that i visit um frequently so we work with the schools on these um environmental things as well and make sure that and the message is taken out of our church buildings into that wider community and i think that's a, a pretty whistle stop tour of our eco churches but if anybody wants any more information or just wants to chat with me about it my email address is there and if you take a look at our facebook pages um you'll see all the stuff that we've been doing 